XP power makes power converters. These are distant cousins of the power adapters that we plug into our computers to run them. Uh, but XP powers are built into equipment in hospitals and factories. As a result, they are difficult to substitute and uh, failure is not an option because you don't want to halt a production line or an operation. It's built its business by building families of small, efficient power converters that slot easily into its customers' machines. But this is not just a product story. Its strategy is to sell more converters to its biggest customers, which it can do through the largest field sales force in the industry, and also by acquiring rivals who make more exotic converters, allowing it to fill in the map of products its customers need. The key thing about Fitted Kitchen Supplier Howden's Joinery is it only supplies the trade. This earns it the repeat business of small builders who go back every time they have a customer that needs a kitchen. This has been a phenomenal success story over the last 25 years and Howden's has 30% of the UK Fitted Kitchen market. The challenge of the future is what happens next. The UK is gradually filling up with depots, but there's an experiment going, over, going on overseas in France. There, Howden's is gradually opening up more depots. At the end of last year, it had 30. And for the year just concluded, it promised to open another 11, bringing the total to 41. The future, it seems, lies there. Cortex makes vehicle tracking systems. These are simple devices installed in vans to, to monitor where they are and to check they're being driven safely and efficiently. Um, the beauty of Cortex system is its simplicity. Uh, the devices can be self-installed by fleet owners. Uh, the software can be configured by the fleet owners too, by themselves. Um, so it can be supplied to small and medium-sized businesses, which is the main market. Uh, at low costs on simple contracts, which heartwarmingly um, customers tend to just roll over and pay as they go when they expire. Um, one thing you might see if you look at the track record of Cortex is that profit growth has not really kept up pace with, with the amount of installations in fleets. And there are really uh, three reasons for that. One is that it's withdrawing from the insurance market, which is depressed profit. The second is that it's spending more to establish itself abroad in the USA and France, which is of course costing money. These two things should be temporary. Um, and the third reason is price deflation, the cost of these devices coming down due to competition. But that seems to be an environment in which low-cost cortex ought to thrive. There's a problem with the book publishing business model, and that is that it's a bit hit and miss. For every runaway success like Harry Potter, which continues to earn brilliantly large sums of money, there are probably hundreds of books that don't earn much money at all. That is why it's interesting that Bloomsbury's great shining light is something completely different, Bloomsbury Digital Resources. These are collections of academic materials sold into university libraries. Uh, from a standing start five years ago, Bloomsbury has grown Bloomsbury Digital Resources to 7% of its total revenue and 18% of its total profit. Uh, I think there may be two reasons for this. Uh, the humanities market has been perhaps underserved by other publishers, which has enabled Bloomsbury to acquire titles relatively cheaply, digitise them, and now if universities want to teach subjects like drama, fashion and design, well, they've got to use a Bloomsbury product. So I'm for the great shining light too. The fascinating thing about PZ Cousins is that new management do not think that the uh, brand in its name, Imperial Cousins Imperial Leather, is a top priority in its future strategy. It's focusing on a small selection of health and beauty brands. Um, for example, Carex, uh, original Source, Saint Tropez, fake tan brand, and uh, Morning Fresh, which is a big brand in Niger of washing up liquid in Nigeria and Australia. Uh, this is in strong con contrast to its earlier strategy when the company was trying to do too much, trying to build too many brands in too many places and also acquire more of them, which was starving its leading, leading brands of resources. Um, but it's not just about the brands. 
The company is also rebuilding neglected capabilities like digital marketing and it's amping up its already reasonably strong sustainability credentials. So its hands are still full, but uh, PZ Cousins is making hard decisions and that's what we really want to see in a company that's trying to improve itself. Another business with a lot on its hand is Goodwins. This is really two collections of businesses. One division is uh, cast and machine steel into giant components and this has been struggling for many years since the uh, oil price crash because uh, lots of its most profitable products were things like check valves for oil pipelines. The other business uh, quarries and processes minerals um, which are used in a wide, also used in a wide variety of industries. This business has really kept Goodwin going while it's reconfigured the steel business investing in building its capacity so it can make components in even bigger sizes, uh, sizes that only a handful of companies worldwide can match. To return to its former glory, it needs to capitalise on that investment, which it appears to have done by securing contracts to supply uh, spent nuclear uh, supply containers for transporting spent nuclear fuel and um, for making components for nuclear submarines. Uh, but Due to the complexities of these contracts, orders are taking a while to come through, um, but I think patience is key to this investment.